Salutations Ginger League and welcome to Super Geeked where we discuss about the latest news on all things super. I'm your host Susan Sutton and joining me this week are Andrew and Kevin. Gentle dorks, how are you? Yep, yeah, I'm doing well. How are you Kev? I'm good, I'm good. A uh, bit tired. Been getting the the Wayne stuff ready for school tomorrow, so mm, been busy, busy. Yeah, the boys they start. Uh, this is their first year doing term time, so that'll be quite, quite fun. And also trying to do all that with a gub die. That's been great. <laughs> I do want How to gub your eye. Uh, that was over a year ago. What um, Connor smacked me what in the eye, like because there was the audacity of two SpongeBob SquarePants coming on back to back, and he went what. And it just went smack and it just cut right through my cornea. So it's so it'll it heals over, but it's not like a it won't permanently heal. So I forget if my eyes get really dry or whatever, what it'll the cut will reopen. So of course now that I'm kind of in the self-employed bubble doing uh, four 12 hour days on the trot wasn't exactly a good idea. And it just went and that was that. Oof. All about the hustle. But there's something I actually do want to address before we get into it. Like um there were some comments from last week's episode that uh, irked a lot of people, rightly so. Um, I just want to say that um, everybody at Super Jan Jan Ginger Media Limited, what we we don't discriminate against anybody, sex, race, gender, what toaster, whatever. What everybody is welcome. What on here, and comments will be removed. You will be removed if uh, what from our friends list. And if you don't like it, quite frankly, you can fuck off. Well said. Yep. Okay, that's Thank enough you. of that. Well, Susan, let's get into the show. We've got some interesting topics today, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, we have. Now, um, I mean, obviously, it's really recently come to light that there's going to be no third Suicide Squad film, but Peacemaker series are still going ahead. What are your thoughts, guys? Kev, do you want to take this one? I'll, yeah, I'll start. Yeah, um, I'm glad that Peacemaker. Uh, getting a season two and possibly a season three. Uh, he is fervently fighting to get a season three. He's already written it. He knows where he wants it to go. And for, for the sake of, of the credits, I just hope it runs for about 10 seasons. Mm. Yeah, I would I would definitely just like just to screw them over. Uh, I do fight what well, I just the suicide squad isn't well, it doesn't shock me in all honesty mm -hmm. because the first one was very ropey. The second one they brought some credit back, but there was still issues. Well, yeah. and especially because mm -hmm. they, they weren't really clarifying if it was still in the same timeline or if there was something else going on with it. So as much as like it uh, I'm like, oh, wasn't even expecting a third one. I'm still I'm shocked to the extent that well, they've actually made the call, but for once, I think it's the right one. I think if they need to do Suicide Squad, start from scratch with it. The Arrowverse done it better. They did. They did. I. I mean, the, the first Suicide Squad, I liked it for what it was. I don't mm. think it should have interlinked with anything that was there. It should have just been a standalone Suicide Squad film. If they'd done it like that, mm. it would have stood out more. But they had to try and link it. They seen Marvel doing what they were doing. So, oh, well, let's throw everything we can, and then it it didn't bomb, but it wasn't excess, successful as the Suicide Squad, mm -hmm. which was a lot more commercially successful. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know where to take it for that. They ended the first one. They could have just left it and like, no, no, no. We made enough money for that to make a sequel. Let's make a th the second one. They made more money. But they don't know where to go. They can't get the writing team to come in and say, this is where we want to go, because it wasn't a story. It wasn't a progressive story. It wasn't going to go one, two, three, four. It was just mm -hmm. a one-off thing. And then they're like, can you do a second one? So I, I suppose. And then they've done the second one. They're like, we can't do it anymore. So they would need to get in a completely different writing team, which would completely change the entire story. Mm -hmm. And I think the easiest way to sum it up is, when you do a film and Jai Courtney has a better performance than Will Smith and <laughs> yeah that's that that pretty much sums it up where it's going yeah. I have to say guess what 
I've never watched Suicide Squad. I know it was a, a really big thing uh, because I've seen posters and memes and T-shirts and close your mouth, man. Um, I've, I've <laughs> that was, seen that it all was about. Sheer shock. <laughs> Are you surprised? Come on, this is me. But so tell me. <laughs> so you open your mouth again. I'm going to put something in there. Ooh. <laughs> I promise. Mind I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the Suicide Squad about? Come on, let, you know, brief layman's terms. What was it about? Well, Big I think that's one of your one ticket. Big starfish. What? Well, and they had to blow it up. Basically, short of it. <laughs> Well, that's not a suicide it's, thing. It's, it's, a it's a group of super, it's a group of super villains who they've implanted with bombs in the back of their neck, and they said, "Go kill this thing," and if you don't do it, we blow you up. So they have to go and kill something. Yeah, you kill. They're essentially, we kill you. they're essentially hitmen for the government, and if they don't do it, they get killed. Ooh. Yep. Right. Okay. Could have been done so much better than it was like in the Arrowverse series, like, but then when they saw that it was doing well and they thought, oh, let's make a movie, and then Arrowverse had to basically like shut that entire thing down, even though they were building it really, really well. But mm -hmm. such is life. So tell yep. me about Peacemaker. Explain to me. He was a what? character from The Suicide Squad, which was the second one, mm -hmm. and they decided he would make a great TV series because. He's, he's played by John Cena, the wrestler, who never takes himself seriously. Hmm. And he came in and played this completely seriously, completely deadpan, and he was one of the funniest characters in it. And they're like, we need a series with him. So they've done a series, and they're like, this is fantastic. And it was. Hmm. It, it really was. What, the fact that you've got John Cena talking to a CGI eagle. <laughs> Hugging, hugging. Yep. Dad, get the camera. Get the camera. <laughs> well, his dad's played by Robert Patrick, who played the... Uh, you ever heard, you've heard of Terminator 2, haven't you? Yeah. Well, so uh, he played the bad guy in that back in the 90s, but he's older now, and he's just, just a grizzled hard ass, which always works for that type of actor. Right, okay, so that, that actually makes sense to me. So although I've never seen Suicide Squad, I'm sorry, but, you know life um mm. yeah it, it makes sense to me what you're saying now about how it would be much better if it were just peacemaker because i think you can get that uh, that comedy aspect from somebody who's playing something that's really really serious and straight and, mm -hmm. you know quite often it's all in the eyes that's what i get told about me it's it's the facial expressions and that's what adds the comedy and everything else and yeah. if that's where the success and the money's going to be well yeah, why not? Why not go ahead, ahead with that? The opening credits are brilliant. Why? Well, because it's yeah. like a it's a it's a musical dance number, and they're just so deadpan. Like their faces are all just like us. Well, they're dancing. You should, you, you really, should look really it up. Upbeat. Yeah. Why? Well, just just even just look that up for a giggle and just listen to the music because James Gunn always has some banging soundtracks. He's a guy done Guardians of the Galaxy. Like the the one with a raccoon in a tree. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think we've covered that one. What, uh, so what's next in the agenda, Susan? Right. What to do with the Flash movie? Hmm? Oof. Well, did anybody see the statement that was dropped by Ezra Miller? Yes. I'm I read assuming something recently, but it hasn't stuck. Yeah, it, it was it was a the it's like your generic uh I'm not well, I've mental health issues i'm going to try and get myself better and blah blah blah, blah. It, it just sounded total to me reading it it was corporate spiel there was no hint of anything about uh, their personality or if they felt remorse it was just yeah i'm mental yeah, i'm admit, going to i'm after, going to rehab after last week's show um i did actually put in their name and Googled, you know, all about it. And to say I was shocked was an understatement. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I think anybody else would have just been dropped like that. It's wow. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that since uh, this has happened, now they're saying that 
uh, Warner Brothers were saying they've got three options. They either bring it out with a limited release, um, like off the back of this statement, why they didn't do a statement and they just brought it out with a release, or they just shelved it altogether. And I don't think anybody would have mind them just shelving it altogether. Why it it seems like a slap in the face. To well, especially given that there's been more cancellations of uh, promising projects, which no doubt we'll get into later on, well, and it's making me really uncomfortable, especially with the, uh, the projects that they've cancelled and who's mm-hmm. in them and what their representation is, is making me really concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it- as if film companies now aren't really taking into account the audience's point of view. It's even more now about the money, about the profits. Um, Perhaps they're kind of thinking, well, with all this, you know, it's the usual thing of bad publicity is good publicity, but is it? Because they're not really, they're not really caring about the audience's point of view. And it's the audience that matters. Mm. They're not not accepting the fact that times have changed and people want to see different things because as we mentioned last week there's a bit of that superhero fatigue because it's the same old same old that's why i was actually really looking forward to even though i'm a marvel fan looking forward to the dc lineup that was coming out at the time because it was Mm -hmm. very different it was very unique and yeah it's just like they went back to default straight white guy mode which is very very concerning Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the the only the only really thing that they've got that's diverse as Aquaman with Jason Momoa. And even then that's still like and a even then, muscular Aye, he's, he, he's Hawaiian, so technically he's American. Hmm. So yeah. So it's it's still the it, the agenda that, that there's no diversity. Yeah. It's like they've went he's Hawaiian close enough. Aye. The same deal with uh, Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. Well yes she's uh, I think she's Israeli. Well, mm-hmm. but she but she doesn't look like the quote unquote normal Israeli. Like she's very she looks more like kind of white normal rather than, you know it just it doesn't sit it it's they're like, oh it's diverse enough and it's a well known character. There mm-hmm. we go. There you go. Pat's head. Bang. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, cause there's there's so much more that they could be doing. And it's mm-hmm. it's like that they're sitting way, way like the same characters. They've got Superman, Batman, Flash, and Wonder Woman, and Aquaman. Yep. And if this is what the this is the is it the fifth or the sixth iteration? I think it's the sixth iteration now. What with um, oh, seventh actually? I think there's been quite a lot of Batman. Basically, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And there's been Aye. a lot of Superman. There hasn't been that yep. many Supergirl. There hasn't that been many. Wonder Woman. There hasn't been, mm-hmm. there hasn't even been many Aquaman, even though he was originally, you know, blo- uh, he was basically the Aryan dream. He was blonde hair, blue Aye. eyes. What when he was yep. originally drawn? So that's why everybody was like with Jason Momoa coming on. They were like, "Oh, this is a change to the character," and everybody just went racist. Yep. <laughs> you can't do right for doing wrong these days. You see, you try no matter how. Um, Subtly, you tr- you try to broach subjects. Um, I mean, especially in film, we go back to Doctor Who and things like that, and mm. all the big hoo ha. And you think, come on, nice pun. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I like that one. I approve that. I'm happy to oblige. I live to serve. <laughs> <laughs> right, l- let's move on. Um, what are your thoughts on Michael B. Jordan's cancelled Superman project? Kev, okay, I'll let you start this one. Um, I'm I'm disappointed in this. I was I was looking forward to it. Uh, Michael B. Jordan is really really good. Anything I've seen him in, he's been good. Even a uh, fan for Craptic, he, he was like one of the things <laughs> that you enjoyed watching because he redeemed himself. In Black Panther, he got, he got a chance, he got a chance, and then he, he, he just he killed that role. And I've never seen him in anything bad apart from the film we won't name again. I've named mm. it once, so that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got to agree. Like, 
Michael B. Jordan is a bankable star. What he's mm-hmm. earned, what his turns in the two Creed films been brilliant. What in like you said in Black Panther, he absolutely like killed it. He was brilliant, and so so much so that like everybody was raging because they always had a thing where they were killing off the bad guys, but it was a way they could come back. But they straight yeah. up killed him, and they're like, "Dude, what the hell? This guy was amazing." But because Black Panther was basically like Marvel's version of the Lion King. And Michael B. Jordan was like their scar, but without a musical number. Well, but it was still fantastic because you sympathized with, uh, with his backstory, with his, mm-hmm. with his origins, like, and obviously didn't like the way he goes about things, but you could understand it. Well, so he's a he's a he's a bankable star. Like, that would have fit, that would have also ticked off some of their street white guy quotas of being like, oh, we've got a diverse person, hey. Well, mm-hmm. and to, to have that dropped, especially with such a high profile name attached to it, is why I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, there's something not right at the top of Warner Brothers. There really isn't. Yeah. It it does seem to be all the diverse things that are getting cancelled. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was the there was talk of a John Stewart a uh, Green Lantern mm-hmm. that's been scrapped. Yeah. Was there not talking Marsh, uh, Martian Manhunter as well? There was talk about that again. That's been scrapped. Uh, they were going to do Wonder Twins. Aha. Uh-huh. Form of. Shape of. Yep. And that gets scrapped as well because mm-hmm. the people they got in to play them, well, uh, oh, they're not diverse enough. There's two white people to get in. So that... mm. <laughs> well, the, well, it might get uh, revived now because it's clearly what they're getting rid of the diverse angle and just want white people. Yeah. And th- th- there's the there's the Doom Patrol and Titans. They're getting cancelled. Uh, yeah, I've seen that as well. What? So it's just it's working its way down the food chain. It's going from movies to TV series. Yep. And, and what's next? They're going to start centering all the games now as well. Probably the only thing that Warner Brothers can't touch is the comics. Thank God for that. Yeah. yeah. Huh? I was going to ask you. You know, does Warner Brothers have a diversity problem? Yes. At the moment, Thanks. yes, definitely, 100%. I'm very, very concerned about it. Yeah. Well, it seemed like they were making the right moves with the, you know, the stuff that they had lined up. So there was a lot of hope and a lot of interest. And out of all of that, the only things that they've brought out are white guy Batman. That's That's been it. Well, and yep. they're bringing out another Shazam movie, uh, white male in the lead. What well, Black Adam... Yes, that's The Rock. That's Dwayne Johnson. But again, he falls into the Jason Momoa kind of bracket of he's been around long enough and has got enough cred that they're like, hey, just put The Rock in F and we'll be fine. Mm-hmm. But as we said previously, it's taken like six years to get it out. What? So it's a bit, it's like, the uh, so why is it taking that long? I know COVID as well had a big impact, but even then it was meant to have been ready for release before COVID hit. Why yeah. did they not bring it out? I just really think that there's too many old white guys up at the top that need to be kicked out and bring some diversity in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny you're talking about old white guys, old white actors. I was watching something the other day that had Clint Eastwood in. And, um, I mean, I like the guy, but I was thinking, oh, come on, you know, it's like the Rolling Stones. Ozzy Osbourne is... is trying to get fit to make a comeback and I, you know all, all due respect to older singers and older actors absolutely but you're not sex symbols anymore <laughs> Sorry. Mm. even at my age doesn't appeal to me um no. <laughs> that... yeah i do believe this you know a time to make room for um younger singers younger actors older actors absolutely have their place um especially in you know the main roles mm-hmm. but to me there's a limit yeah i think i think when it starts getting to the stage where there's so much of it where so much is focused on the reboot or the rebirth of something that they forget that there's act that's hindering the stuff that's coming up as mm-hmm. well don't get me wrong i'm now at the age where i think yeah, all modern music is shit so well, I'm now at that stage where I'm like, oh, I'm the I'm the old guy. Bring, but but bring bring that bring that wink biscuit back for one more run. Yeah, 
<laughs> well, that, Although, so. to be fair, nobody wants Fred Durst back. Hey, I want Fred nobody Durst wants back. That. I want Fred Durst back, especially now that he's embraced his middle-aged la, uh, white guy stance. I think that would just be so funny. Him just walking on instead of like chugging a Red Bull. It's like he's taking like a one of those effervescent uh, C drinks, just like that. <laughs> right. And then, ha- then halfway through break stuff, he's like, wait, wait, hold on. Got to take my calcium belt. Okay, let's go. Bring some <laughs> oxygen on the stage for him. Yeah, yeah, he's not Axel Rose just yet. <laughs> he's no, getting he's there. Have you seen him? Oh, yeah. You'd think with all the energy drinks as well, he's got to consider his prostate and having to uh, keep running off, off and having a pee as well <laughs> with his inner frame. Yeah. Well, I, I would just go right, just get a cataract sorted, just get it, just get it hooked up. Well, I got, I ain't got no time. I just go. Well, throw it in the crowd. Someone can sell it on eBay. Done. <laughs> So what about, uh, or do you have any thoughts on the Punisher's potential return to the MCU? Kev, I'll let you take this one to start with, because like, like, I've just got back into watching the Punisher like, mm-hmm. uh, recently. That was actually the last show that Alice and I were watching before we got hit with you know, the boys coming in the emergency section. We only got halfway mm-hmm. through it and we never got to finish it. Because, well, yeah, kids. Well, yep. So, you're uh... Uh, your thoughts first, and then we'll jump in with mine. I hope they do it well. I mean, they've got John Bresno back as the Punisher, who was fantastic. Easily has been the best version of the Punisher by mm-hmm. far. And oh, fairness. Wasn't I, one of them Dolph Lundgren? One of them was Dolph Lundgren, yeah. And it, I mean, it, it, it was what it was. Yeah. He was. He was fantastic in it. But it was wow, it was very 80s, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then the Thomas Jane one for the 2000s was very, very 80s because they basically wrote the script, it mm-hmm. was a sequel, and they're like, Oh no, we need to change it a wee bit so that we can make it another one. So that mm-hmm. was supposed to be a sequel to the yeah. Dolph Lundgren one, and they changed it, and it was so like was- everything is from the 80s. So was it was it kind of like Dumb and Dumber Two, where they just basically like wrote the script straight after it and just waited till Jim Carrey's career took a nosedive to bring him back, uh, just like two Pretty decades much. later. <laughs> Pretty oh, much. But well, no, was, I, I was John Travolta I in the fir- in that first one or the second one? I can't remember where John Travolta was in the first or the second. Uh, he was in the Thomas Jane Punisher Thomas one for two thousand one. So I he was the second. Well, well there, technically... there you go. Dolph Lundgren in the yep. first, John Travolta in the second. What does that tell you? But I, I hope they don't change anything from the Netflix series. I hope they make that canon rather mm. than having to reintroduce everything and just completely change it to their agenda when they don't need to do that. They can easily fix that in. Mm-hmm. Again, that's the same worry that I had with, excuse me, with Daredevil. What with it coming mm-hmm. back? What well, we're all worried as it is, has that Netflix kind of saga is that a multiverse and they're just going to write it off kind of thing and it's the same with the punisher because from me re-watching it the thing that you love about the punisher it's so violent it's so yep. brutal it's so gory what because it explores like you know not only like this guy like on a, a vendetta what for some against people that murdered his family like it's dealing with the fact he was a soldier in the war he's got ptsd what because he was recruited into like a special unit where they did the jobs that basically you know weren't allowed to be told that you were doing like you no know, black ops kind of stuff what and all the trauma he had from dealing with that what so it was a great portrayal of mental health as well what and how you how that that type of ptsd can affect you what and i'm just worried that uh, with it being under the mouse house that they just go uh ha oh, we're, we're all happy all the time now we don't believe in that ha oh. Here, here, have someone just throw a knife at him. Huh. Yeah. So it, need, it needs to stay true to what Netflix did. What to really it does. go for it. Mm-hmm. Is, and even John Bernthal said that himself. Like he said, he wasn't going to return a watered down version. But you mm-hmm. never know. What money talks and bullshit walks. So. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll get a, a chance to see what Daredevil does with a She-Hulk mm. series in Echo and see mm. how he fares in that. Have you we'll seen be the meme to... that's been going around about that? that because Echo, Echo as a character is deaf 
what and uh, Daredevil's blind, and there and there's a meme going around going, how the fuck are these two going to communicate? <laughs> and I'm like, I never thought of that because she's deaf, so she communicates in sign language. He can't see the sign language. What well, and she won't be able to hear him speak. I'm like, this is going to be a very interesting one. How they go about that? She can like, read though. Oh, can Touch she? and vibration. Yeah. Uh, she mm. she can lip read and technically he can see. Ah, uh, he's got kind of like he's uh, it's kind of like predator, isn't it? That kind of uh, way. He's, like, like he's, he's, he's he's hearing so sensitive that he can actually see outlines of stuff in that. So he can see. So that's how they should mm. be able to get around it. That's yeah. how I would do it anyway. But you know, MCU. We'll, yeah. See how we'll they see, do it. See how they explain that away with just you know reasons. Yeah. That'll be something and fa- that, that people will actually be. Um, I think I've said before how I'm I'm really into continuity in films, and mm-hmm. there will be people that will be watching that to, as you say, Kevin. You know, really spot. They will. It won't be a, a case of oh, I just noticed that. It'll be a case of they'll be looking for it and probably miss yep. half the film, yep. but they mm. will be looking for it. I think that's the fun, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, well, that's the sole reason that the internet practically exists now. But so podcasts like ours could watch this stuff and go, right, what nitpicks did we uh, did we find? What, and what Easter eggs are there that we can just troll through it and seem that our <laughs> knowledge is better than your knowledge? And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm just like the guy in the middle that goes, I don't know all the heavy duty stuff. But I know more than your average Joe, so I can fill in the gaps. And then yeah, that's, I, then, that's why I'm here for the rest of it. Yeah. Kev's got the knowledge that I don't have. So I'm like, right. And then then we were like, okay, we should really try and get a girl. <laughs> <laughs> right. We all know that I'm joking, obviously. Right. Because yeah, we need someone to keep us in line. Otherwise, we'd be talking for about three hours. Yep. We'd mm. still be talking about yeah. Michael B. Jordan now. No, we wouldn't even have got off the the Ezra Miller stuff yet. That's true. That's true. We'd still we still be going um, like, I, like I was hey. shocked when when I read that story. Um, mm-hmm. Unbelievable! And I, I went through several different uh, articles. I was like, "Wow, how is it? How how are they not in jail?" You mm-hmm. know. But, uh, oh. going, going back to last week, you were asking me because I was saying that there's just so many. Um, superhero films out there so many rehashes and what have you and you you asked me what type of films that i would like to see coming back and yes last week i said about more scottish films with scottish cast crew and everything else Mm -hmm. and i I thought about it a bit more and i thought i would love to see a lot more films based on uh real life because there is so much going on in the world Uh, i'm not just talking about current present day stuff but there is mm. so much interesting stuff out there that uh, it, w- it would be brilliant. And what a great way of educating people as well through film, um, learning things that, that they've probably never even heard of before. Um, and you you were saying, Andrew, about how you like really violent films. I need to have a word with you in the, in the quiet, you know. <laughs> but uh, I, I wouldn't say I like violent films. However... I love horror films and the more gory, the better. Uh, things mm. like Saw, or I've seen all the Saw um, films. Uh, that Hostel. I can't, I, I can't do the, I can't do the torture porn. I just can't. But it's not real. <laughs> what? It's but it's, real. it's still, it feel, they do it so well now that it feels yeah. real. I remember I went, the first Saw film I went to see was Saw 3. And I went because one of my friends had said, none of them have tied in at the minute. You're all good, and of course, this one ties in straight off the bat. <laughs> wow! Well, so, I, so at first, I'm like, "You son of a bitch! What have I missed?" And then I see the bit with the hand and the acid. You know the bit, well, and I was just like, "I'm gonna be sick straight out the door." Because <laughs> I am, uh, I am a massive <laughs> shite bag, especially when it comes to horror. What well, um, it's like because I'm not a fa- I like violence in a film if it's like, justified for the plot, like in the Punisher sense. What well, he's got PTSD, what like there's something he's not right, what well, he's he's on a vendetta, like there's a there's a reason behind it. I'm not like vi- I'm not violence for violence sake. Well, it has to be justifiable reasons for it. If it's just straight up like 
okay, what weird contraption can we put uh, Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park in to get him to do his emo screen before he bursts apart? Well, which was the like, which was the Saw 3D one, and I was like, come on, man, like well, you better than to, this. To, to be fair, that, that he does have a justification in Saw. I mean, you do sympathise with him a bit, mm. and oh, well. you know, there's there's a Saw 10 coming out next year. Apparently, Ooh. I just yeah. read that. I read that about half an hour ago. I was like, oh, wow. I've still not seen Spiral. Yeah, because that didn't get a lot of good reviews. It well, didn't. Uh, well, at all. And again, well, um, it should really try to be pushed again because Chris Rock was the lead in it and there's a mm-hmm. lot of sympathy votes still for him. Well, we could we could do it. We could Jared Leto Morbius bring that back. Yep. Well, I said people Mor- would actually go Morbentine. and see it. Except people would actually go and see it because they would be like, "We support you, Chris Rock. We love you." Mm-hmm. I and just we do. find it odd, Andrew, that you that you say you know you you don't like the horror movies because they they're so realistic now. But even though you know it's all fake, it's just you know props and prosthetics and all that kind of thing. You you can't live in that fantasy world, and yet you live in the superhero world, which is all fantasy and fake. You're strange. <laughs> you signed up for this. I did. You you know I'm how strange, strange I am. Well, and it's yeah. even getting to the stage now that I'm actually going to be doing a horror podcast. Well, <laughs> that's getting that's getting that's getting added to the slate on Ginger Media Limited. That was called the the Scaredy Ginger Cat Podcast. <laughs> well, and it's going to be a, have to watch films. The, yep, guy that I'm doing the the Edinburgh documentary with Grant Deans, the Edinburgh ice hockey documentary came, came up with me with an idea about like a horror podcast. And I thought, why not try and expose this massive shite bag to what <laughs> horror films, watch him squirm and then see there and see how broken I am at the end. Yes. <laughs> well, so, so I can safely I say that you, up to watch that. So I can safely say you're both on board to watch this misery. That yep. will be put through. Oh, I can deal with that. I can deal yeah. with that. And they'll be doing things like, you know, we'll be doing top 10 lists, like top 10 like movies to start to watch to start off in horror if you're a shite bag and all that kind of So like horrors that aren't really that scary, all that kind of stuff. But I mean, I remember like going to see, going to see The Ring when it first came out in the cinema with my pals. I was dragged there against my will. I was, I was outnumbered. I wanted to go and see Shrek 2 again. Well, but no. <laughs> What and I'm just sitting like through the whole thing like that. <laughs> Absolutely bricking myself. What the guy spent more time watching me shitting myself than I did watching the film. <laughs> well, when I went to see the ring, I'd seen you know the original before ah, right. it. So yeah. when I went to see the American one, it's like this isn't scary. Mm. You need to go watch it. Like the same with it with the Grudge. Mm-hmm. The American one's not scary at all, and it completely changes the story. You watch the Japanese one; it's like my fucking god. Oh, I'll give you a clue of how much of a shite bag I am. The film Requiem for a Dream. Yes, with, Jar- with Jared Leto in it, and it's it's and it's a really kind of indie film about like drug misuse and all that kind of stuff. That freaked me the fuck out. I watched it once, and I was like, nope. Not doing that again. I had nightmares about it for fucking weeks. Well, well the whole the, film's basically an acid trip, though, isn't it? It so. is. It's just so... <laughs> I can't even describe what it's like to you, Susan, aside from don't see it. Do you know, it, it's it's amazing. I think it's fantastic that Alison actually had to have a caesarean because if you'd have been down at the lower end while well, these two little things were coming out... You oh, with a hit the deck. The <laughs> with a hit the deck. I mean, in fairness, like after Alison had had them, well, and they were taken out and stuff in the incubators and everything, well, I actually did feel quite faint. But it's because there was like 10 people in the room because they had to have like, you know, five people per baby. And then they've got mm-hmm. the couple, a couple of people for Alison as well and had me. And that, eight, that April was like when the big heat wave had kicked off. So right. I was just like, 
really fall back. What and so I uh, took me out for a glass of water, and I was beating myself up something awful. I was like, my wife's just produced two human beings out of her, and I'm out because I feel faint. <laughs> and I'm like, what a fucking wuss. He's like, well, she, he's like, she won't be, she won't be long in there. Em. They'll get her sorted, and then yeah, you'll be there. Where yeah, five and a half hours, she was spewing her ring because all the drugs they'd have to, had to give her to get them out, and it was just that was a horror film. But one I but one I was able to survive because I would have ten minute rests in between. It was like every ten minutes she was going to throw up, and I was just like, "There you go, there's the pan, <laughs> right down." Not ten minutes. There's the next one. There you go. <laughs> Or five and a half oh, hours. Dear. Yeah. It's the stuff they don't well, tell you about. Nope. On that note, before we put all the viewers off <laughs> ever tuning in again, <laughs> we've come to the end of the show. I'm sorry, folks. No more talk about blood and gore. Not until we see this new podcast that Andrew's doing. I am really looking forward to that. Yeah, but well, anyway... uh, the socials are up for it. So the Scaredy Ginger Cat podcast, why well, go and get the follows up. There's nothing been recorded yet, but stay tuned. There will be plenty of me shitting myself very, very soon. Excellent. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. So for now, he's super, he's ginger, and I've been your host, not the eye candy, Susan yes. Sutton. <laughs> Tune in again. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.